So this i5 13600K has the most cores any i5 has ever had on human history from Intel. It's got 14 cores and 20 threads. But this over here is an i7 12700K, which also has 20 threads, but it's got 8P cores compared to the 6P cores. So in this video, we're gonna be checking out as a creator, is it worth going with the i7 or an i5 because they're pretty much the same price. Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. So the first thing is the price. And I wonder when you are watching the video, what is going to be the price difference in your country and also some of your local shops so if you can please comment down below what is the price difference between these two cpus but right now at the point of me making the video the 12700k is actually on a sale and is about 298 dollars compared to the 319 dollars on the i5 which makes the i7 actually 6.5 percent cheaper so let's see if that percentage also reflects on the performance stats if you look at the cores then the 13600k has 14 cores 12700k has 12 cores but their p core and e core ratio is different the 12700k only has four e cores where the 13600k has eight e cores and the 12700k eight p cores and 13600k six p cores and the max turbo frequency is 100 megahertz lower on the P cores and E cores at the max turbo frequency on the 12700K. The base power or TDP is same on both of them, 125 watts. And the turbo power is 181 watts on 13600K and 190 watts on the 12700K. They both have the same iGPU. But in real world now, we're going to see if those extra E cores on the 13600K actually matter or are we better having more P cores like the 12700K. For my test bench setup I'm using Fantex Glacier 1 360mm AIO and three Fantex T30 fans. The motherboard is Asus Z690 Pro at Creator and we're using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB 5200 mega transfers per second. The GPU is Asus RTX 3090 and the SSD is Cardia Z440 for the OS and Seagate Firecuda 530 for the project drive and the power supply is Deepcool BQ1000M. Looking at Cinebench R23 here, we can see that the 12700K is 0.46% slower in the single core score and 4.7% slower in the multi core score. So looks like more cores actually matter here. The Geekbench 5 scores are a bit further and the 12700K is 2.3% slower in the single core score and 7.5% slower in the multi core score. But in photo editing now and Photoshop, the 12700K is 1.7% slower in the overall score. Interestingly, the GPU score is 3.9, pretty much 4% slower on the 12700K, even though we're using exactly the same GPU, but just the CPU difference will actually affect the GPU score for some reason as well. And the general score is 12.75% slower on the 12700K, which is absolutely fascinating i do want to mention that these benchmarks are not just done once there's about seven benchmarks run both of them and then the average calculator from them to get very accurate data on these actual benchmarks in lightroom classic now the 12700k is 3.4 percent slower in the overall score so we can see that the max boost frequencies actually do matter and the 100 megahertz does matter the active score is 3.7 and passive 3.25 percent slower on the 12700k in premiere pro here the extended overall score is 0.46 percent slower and the standard overall score is 0.34 percent slower but at the same time the live playback score extended and standard is fast on the 12700k which is very interesting but generally the 13600k is slightly faster in premiere pro in after effects the gap goes a little bit further now the overall score is about 4.5 percent slower on the 12700k but inter interestingly 
the GPU score is about 13.5% faster on the 12700K. And during to resolve here, we can see that the 12700K is 6.5% slower in the extended score and standard overall score is 6.8% slower, which is quite a bit of a difference here now. And now you'd actually start to see or feel the difference a little bit. The GPU effects is 11% slower now here on the 12700K, which is interesting because all the other benchmarks, we had the other way that the 13600K was slower. But here, the 13600K is better in DaVinci Resolve. Moving on to V-Ray, we can see that the 13600K with the more E cores is faster and the 12700K is about 3.5% slower. And finally now in the Blender, the 13600K is faster with its E cores, interestingly enough, and the 12700K is about 8 to 14% slower in the monster, junk shop and classroom scenes, which is just fascinating performance on the 13600K. Now, another thing we wanna mention is the power draw. The 13600K actually pulls less power at 100% utilization than the 12700K. It pulls 148 watts compared to the 163 watts on the 12700K, which just makes the 13600K even more appealing because you don't have to use that big of a cooler. You can use maybe a mid-range air cooler tower for the CPU rather than the 12700K, which starts to reach like the higher end uh, air coolers or AIOs or so on, which just shows that those e cores actually do make a difference and an extra boost clocks at 5.1 gigahertz are nice to see on the 13600K. Now, whether you should buy the 13600K over the 12700K does depend on the price. If the price difference is a few percent or the very, very similar, then the 13600K does make more sense because it's truly faster. But if we're seeing the 12700K being uh, more than 6.5% cheaper, then probably the 12700K starts to look a bit more appealing just because you get better performance for your money. But if I was you, I'd probably go with a 13600K. If you want to check out the latest pricing and the individual CPU reviews about these two, then I highly recommend you go check them out just because I'm going to compare them to more CPUs and I'm going to speak a bit more in detail about the specs and what these CPUs can do. So I highly recommend you go check them out. And if you want to build yourself a best bang for buck create a piece PC build then check out the PC build guides in the description below. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching and bye bye.